hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'll be showing you guys how i make my wig firstly as you can see we have the dummy head and then we have i placed the wig cap on the dummy head then i have those two combs to put it in the wig cap once i'm done making the wig and i have my bundles and my thread and then needles and then scissors and then a comb what's next okay now i'm placing the close jaw on the hair like in the middle because i want like a center it's not a center pattern i want i want side pattern but we place that on the wig cap so once i've done that i use like the safety pins to place the wigs the sorry i use the safety pins to place the close the close jaw on the wig cap so that when i want to sew it to be easier for me to sew so I just have to pull it down, put it in place, use the pin to secure it. Because if I don't have the pin on it, it's to be so difficult to actually get the close jaw in the right place. So now I have to take thread and then I'll put it through the needle I showed you before. Beforehand, I usually have like three needles. I set everything in place and all of that. But I just wanted to show you guys how I do it. So you fold the thread into two. So that it can be stronger and then place it you see as i'm folding it too yes i fold it and then where's the needle put it through the middle yeah there are two types of needles there's this curvy one i have and there's a straight one i prefer using the curvy one because i feel like it's easier to you know what they call it? i keep on saying you know like you guys know you know you guys don't know i it's easier to actually curve it um, when I'm sewing it in so you see how I do it firstly I try to use the tip one of the edges of the closed jaw and I secure it to the cap and I keep doing that like I'll use I'll do this method I'll go all around this closed jaw on this wig cap and then as I do it I make sure I like once the thread is coming closer to the cap and the closed closed jaw i what do you call it i make sure i make it go through the needle sorry through the jesus i make sure i make it go through the thread like i can do it twice i can do it once so that it can be secure secure enough i'm actually sorry guys it's called closure but i feel like calling it closed jaw is actually better you guys understand that it's closed jaw see how i do it to learn from this method and it's easier to actually do the closure first before you start sewing the remaining um weaves on the cap because by the time you sew everything where you now have space for the closure it's be very difficult to actually sew the closure to the cap so you start with the closure first and see how i just keep going round and round and round this is what I'll do throughout till I get to the end. Damn, I've gotten to the end. You see? Sorry guys, it's very difficult trying to do this kind of stuff. Like sew a wig. Make a wig. Oh make a wig and at the same time show you guys a wig and how to make this wig. It's not that easy. So I just keep doing that. You can see how it's well laid. Like there is no bump, there is no hole, nothing, nothing. And you have to move the hair to the side so it doesn't get trapped in the thread when you're trying to sew it. And see how that's the tip of the closed jaw and the weave. You see how I take it through? I wrap this one like up to six times because I'm trying to secure it because this is like the end. When you have one of those tangles, it can be frustrating sometimes. You have to make sure this thing is very close to the wig cap, like very tight, so that nothing bad happens. So once I do that, I separate the thread into two, and I tie a knot, so like so or three times, to make sure it's actually secure. Then I cut it off. So now, once this is done, you can see everything looks good. I will now try and move the cap 
a little bit further because the head of this dumb baby is smaller than my head so i have to move it forward expand it a little bit so that when i put on my head it can actually work out can you see that's how we do it this is how we do it secure it secure it secure it because if you don't have a pin to this it's going to be very difficult like very stressful so i have to use this kind of method and usually you can get that stand thing but how we at the moment or the one that you place to the table and turn it or use that i tried using that and it was a massive fail if you check my video of that um blown wig fail i tried using that stand but it didn't work out so i was like nah just put on the table and show you guys how i do it yes okay so i make my weave double not single double make it double double because if it's double it's easier but making it single like it has to be the space you leave in between the weaves when you're sewing is going to be like very small so now i put the needle through the weave like the weft part of the weave i don't even know what they call that I put it through that to start with the wig process because I feel like once that part is secure to the cap, you really have no problem with the other parts of the hair once you're actually sewing it to the cap. So I just do that and I keep going. Then for the rest, I just go like I go through underneath the weave, like where the where the, where the bundle part starts from, yeah, I think that's what they call it. I just go underneath it and then hook it up to the cap, and then I just continue playing. You know, it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. I have nothing to say at the moment. But that's how I, and yeah, don't forget, I also do that stuff whereby I make the need to go through the thread like twice or once depending on how tight you want the weave to be on the cap and i just keep doing that doing that doing that doing this doing that doing that it goes on and on it goes on and on and on Oh yeah, I forgot. I also, yeah, can you see the space I leave? Sometimes I can leave a little space, but sometimes I want it to have more space. And usually I do this process whenever I get to the end of the hair when I want to fold it over. Because it makes it easier for me. Because sometimes when you fold it and try to sew it when it's folded, it's kind of difficult sometimes to actually get that right folding stuff. I keep saying stuff like, oh my god, which is. Yeah, because once I do that, it makes the hair stay down better than when I just um, try and sew it so tight to the cap. Because you know it has this bulging, it has, this, it has a way of looking just awkward when you don't tie, the, when you don't sew that folded part of the wig properly to the cap. But it's a struggle. It is a struggle making it. Can you see? I'm not finding it for me. It isn't easy. So, keep trying to sew and sew and sew and sew. I had to switch because I couldn't take it anymore. So I have to act like I'm actually making my child's hair by putting the head on my lap. And you can see how the process is even easier and faster now. Can you see how I'm doing it? Go through, over, over, tie. Go through, over, over, tie. Go through, over, over, tie. Just keep going and going and going. It's a gradual process. When get to one end, yeah, this is how I actually do the end of the head. Like, once I do that, I'll fold it over 
and try and make it more secure so that the down that part doesn't have to be cut out when the weave is done. Just keep going round, round and round, just like a merry-go-round. This voiceover stuff is not easy. And then when I get to like when the thread is very small, I just stop the twist it over, and then do that knot thing I did for the closure part, and then get a new thread so I can continue making this week. Let's go. Then once I get closer, just keep sewing and sewing. You can see how I'm making it in like a semicircular shape. So it actually works out for me. And you can see how it is now. Imagine if I was doing this before I did my closed jaw. It wouldn't be easy to do my closed jaw if I started use doing this method first. This is actually better off when you're actually doing a leave out. Because you can see where the net space is on my cap. The one in the one like where the closed jaw is, if you cut that part, you can have like a C C part kind of stuff. Yeah, kind of stuff. I said stuff again, sorry. Why am I saying sorry? And then you just keep sewing and sewing and sewing and sewing. As you can see, this look, oh wow, this wig is looking good. Oh yeah, and if you guys feel like you can see like a purplish tone, I actually dyed this hair purple. That's I did like the ombre kind of dye stuff, and I didn't make a video this because I I dyed this hair like last year. And the funny part is it came out right. Whereas for the blonde ones, when I decided to show you guys how I did it, it did not come out as expected. So now, I just continue with the methods I've spoken about. Making it go through the cap and through the weave. Tying it very well. And I keep going round and round. Sometimes you literally have to brush it so that the hair stays down, doesn't get trapped in between the thread. And the needle. Yeah, guys, when I stop talking, I have like I don't even know what to say at this point because I feel like I'm repeating myself. And then me not talking is just like some ping cricket kind of stuff till the end of this video. Yeah, as you can see, I'm almost approaching the end of this wig making. You just keep on sewing and sewing till you get there. Yes, just keep on sewing. We're almost there, we're almost there. Just keep doing it. No, oh, this video is too long. Okay. I hope you guys are getting this method very well and very right. You see how it goes through the hair and goes through the cap. Yeah. And then you twist it. And then that's how we do it. Then we get the next hair and go over this one. That one should be like the last one I'm going to use probably. Because the space is very small. That's how we do it. Yeah, you see, I told you. The last hair we have. Just, I know it seems so fast. I have to make this video fast because if it's slow, it's going to be like a three hour tutorial. And ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I'm still practicing because I got to be the next beyond side. Yeah, so now I have to make it, I have to put it like very close to the close jaw so that you don't see like any space or any gap because that's how I want mine to be. Some people give it like a little, a liquid bit of space. For me, I like it to be just directly side by side to the close jaw. To the what? Close jaw. I don't know how to say close jaw. Close your, close your, close your, close your. 
Yeah, to be closure. See, when you meet people, it starts affecting you and your English. Focus, focus, focus. Yeah, you got that right. So, just keep on sewing. Because we're almost there. So, what I do when I'm getting close to the end, or when I'm at the end, the same method I did when I was at the end of my closure, is the same thing I'll do. Make sure it goes through it. Tie it like up to like a billion times so that it's actually secure and very tight so that it don't get loose. Like when you're outside, it won't come up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're almost at the end anyway, so and this wig is looking clutch. Oh also the reason why I tied the closed jaw is because I didn't want the hair to be affecting my sewing process. It makes it easier anyways because by the time I'm done with this end I'll actually lose everything and you see how nice and clutch it's gonna be I'll probably insert a video when I was doing something else to show how I actually styled or made this hair snatched let me just use this opportunity to do my outro thank you guys for watching thank you guys for watching thank you guys for watching <laughs> We can be serious. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Wow. That was being done. So this is what it looks like. When I'm done styling it and then I wear it, I'll come back and show you guys. Oh.